while we work on those words, you know what, would you do me a favor? Shake hands with at least two people. Give somebody a fist bump and tell them it's good to see you at church. Go ahead.
song of faith we're going to keep singing this for just a moment regardless of where you find yourself would you sing it with all your heart I won't be afraid of God
as we keep singing that, if you would, would you close your eyes with us? Church, don't miss this opportunity to tell him that his is the kingdom, that his is the power, his is the glory. The spirit of God is in this place. If you're willing, would you raise your hands to him?
mind the things that God has promised over you. And if you don't know what that is, just think of scripture. I will see your goodness in the land of the living. I will see your face, Jesus. I'll have encounter with you. I'll see salvation in my family. I'll see healing over the people that I love. Put those things in the front of your mind and begin to prophesy. Prophesy over yourself. Prophesy over this church. Prophesy over our island. I pray for revival and I believe that it will happen. I prophesy in the name of Jesus before I see the breakthrough that's going to happen. So just begin to sing out. Begin to prophesy the promises that were put over your life. One more time, when I only see in part. When I only see in part, I will prophesy your promise. I believe you, God. As you finish what you start, I will trust you in the process. Jesus. Thank you for this time to get to come to your feet. Remember your promises in our lives. I feel like God wants to remind us of the promises that he has on our lives this morning. That song talks about the process. Oh, the process so hard. I was reading out of John yesterday, <clears throat> John 11, when Jesus, his inner circle people, he hears of Lazarus' death. And he goes to Judea, 
see his beloved friends, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. Now this time, it was a very risky time for him to even go back to Judea because they wanted to stone him and kill him in the city, but he went because his inner circle needed him. It says that um, Martha remained inside. I'm sorry, Mary remained inside the home and if you've ever lost somebody or something dear to you, you know that air when you're mourning, like there's this sting in the air and you're sad and you're heavy. And Jesus arrives in Judea and her sister Martha comes in and says, Mary, Jesus is here and he's asking for you. Can you imagine our situations? Put your biggest situation in front of you right now. Jesus is saying, I'm here. Come to meet me in this situation. Mary told him, she said, Jesus, if you would have been here, you wouldn't have died. How many times in our situations have we said, God, if you would have intervened, I wouldn't be feeling this pain right now. And we blame, we blame the one, the only one that can fix our heart's mess. There is a process that we have to go through and it's so hard. And in John 11, it says that Jesus wept. He knew, he told Mary, your brother's going to live. He's only sleeping, but he still wept. He's weeping with us. He knows the outcome. He knows the promise, but he still weeps with us. In our doubt, in our worry, in our anxiety, God has feelings with us in those dark places. But I feel like he wants to remind you that the Lazarus in your life is not dead. Your marriages, your finances, your relationships, your jobs, your passion for your work. I mean, it can be anything. God wants to bring back to life what is dead in your lives. So I want us to respond this morning to what he's asking us in the process. If you want to close your eyes and just raise your hands to him, if you are in a process that you desperately need him to come to you, he's saying, come, child, respond to me. I know the outcome and it's not death, because he is good. Jesus, thank you so much for never leaving us. Thank you for always fulfilling your promises in our lives, even when we forget, even when we doubt, even when we blame you, God, forgive us. We repent. Forgive us for pointing the fingers at you, blaming you for our circumstances. I just proclaim life in this room this morning that nothing that feels lost is beyond the reach of heaven, beyond the reach of our Savior, beyond the reach of the one who can resurrect what is dead in your life. We just proclaim freedom. We proclaim um, restoration in relationships and in hearts this morning. God, we just receive what you have for us. God, in the process, in the pain, Lord, just remind us. Give us hope and give us peace, Jesus. We prophesy your promises on our lives today. I prophesy promises would be renewed today in the minds of your children. 
you would remind them of your goodness, you would remind them of your love, your love that never fails. It surpasses all understanding because even when we don't feel the love for you, you have the love for us. So I just proclaim love in this place. That you would go to him in love. You would go to him in our mess. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, greet somebody next to you. Tell them you're happy to have them in this rainy weather this morning. We made it. Yay. Hi, I'm Nina. And I'm Pablo, and we're the associate pastors here at Elevate Community Church. You may have noticed that we keep the kids with us during worship. We believe and studies show that this sets a firm foundation for their faith as they grow. So we encourage you parents to engage with your kids next week during worship. Speaking of kids, it's time to dismiss them to Kids Church. Aloha, kids. If this is your first time at Elevate, we would love to connect with you. Please take a moment to complete the connect card. Once you're done, you can drop it off in the offering bucket or give it to one of the pastors. If you'd like to partner with us, there's three easy ways to give. In just a moment, we'll be passing around the buckets or you can text any amount to 84321. And you can find us at elevatecommunity.church slash give. If you would like more information about Elevate and find out how you can get involved with groups, please go to our website. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so glad that you're here. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, hey, how's everyone doing this morning? Good. Okay. That was a little delayed. I forgive you. How's everyone doing this morning? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I'm super stoked because um, how many of you guys just feel better just uh, after being in worship? How many of you feel like, ah, okay, I can face another day, right? Yes, I feel way uh, better. I'm so excited. Hey, if you're new to Elevate, we have a Get Connected card. If you don't have one, you need to get one before you leave today because we want to stay connected with you. We want you to uh, be informed about what's happening here at Elevate. We're actually in the middle of a series. Uh, we're going through the book of Acts. And so if you've ever read through the book of Acts, uh, there's 28 chapters. Um, so if, you, if you're like, oh, no, I haven't started reading. Today we're on Acts chapter 8. You can jump in with us anytime. If you have the YouVersion app, you can also um, uh, access that on your phone. Download the app. And if you're not good at reading, it'll actually read it to you, which is really great. Uh, or if you're in a hurry or on your way to work, you can listen to a chapter a day. And it's going to be so powerful. In fact... Uh, God has been speaking to us uh, on this plan, so you can jump on the plan with us, or you can read along with us on your own. Um, so uh, make sure and be a part of that, because I believe that God is going to speak through that. How many of you guys could use some extra prayer in your life? I know for me, I need more prayer. Uh, I, I definitely... Um, in, in moments where I go, okay, I know I'm a pastor and all, but uh, I, I really need prayer in different situations. And sometimes you can pray over yourself, right? Lay hands on yourself. Uh, but sometimes there's it's so much more power where the Bible actually says where two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there. And so we have prayer at 930 every morning. You can come in if you feel called to prayer, if you feel like prayer is my thing. I love praying. Come and uh, join us at 9.30. Um, this morning was a powerful time. How many of you guys were here this morning and you just say, wow, we, we felt like we had church before we had church? Amen. Amen. Yeah, okay, me and Pastor Zach. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> but um, everyone who serves on a serving team here, we just encourage them to come and be a part of uh, our prayer time together so we can pray over uh, the service. And we know that God has been answering multiple, multiple prayers, and um, we're so excited about that. Well, uh, hey, we uh, had a membership class last week. And that was pretty exciting. We actually, uh, a membership class is kind of an official way to be like, hey, you know, um, this, this relationship is getting pretty serious. And so, um, so we have a membership class. We're going to actually have another one coming up. We have 46 official members. Can we just get a chi for that? I know. If you come from a mega church, you're like, that's nothing. 
But um, it's really awesome because our church started in our living room with zero people. Now it's grown, 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 and it's so exciting that um, every day um, God is adding to the number of people that are being reached and um, what's happening here at Elevate. It's really exciting what God is doing. So if you miss the member, if you miss the membership class, uh, we don't be discouraged. We're actually going to be having another one before the end of the year. If you still want to um, sign up for membership, it's uh, about an hour long. We give you free food. Last week we had Buca de Beppo. How can you say no to buka, right? Like, yeah, hello carbs. I'm carb loading that day. Um, and so uh, the, our next one will be um, in November. So make sure that you, uh, November 3rd, actually, right after service. So if you missed this last one and you say, hey, you know, I love Elevate. I love what God is doing here. I want to be a part of it. I want to um, become a member, an official member uh, of the church. Uh, mark your calendars and make sure and make plans on being here. And we can do like a poll. If you decide that you, you want to, we'll do a poll of like what we should order what kind of takeout would be good because Buca de Beppo got uh, uh, beat out by the Italians. Um, so all of the Italians were like, Buca! Uh, actually, Nina and Pablo, uh, they're Italian. Anyway, so um, we can vote on what to serve and it will be a great time. But um, hey, we're going to go ahead and I don't know if we already collected the offering, but we're going to go ahead and um, take a few moments to do that. And I just want to give a testimony of God's goodness. I was talking to a friend earlier this week and we were talking about a situation that was very um, a financial difficult situation. So we prayed and then this morning I got news that um, God not only like showed up in a miraculous way, um, but something that she was expecting to um, to be twice as much um, of a payment, actually even half of a payment um, of what she was expecting to pay out and just how God was like miraculously providing in, in crazy ways. And she said, you know, um, God's been challenging her to um, start giving and tithing. So that is really cool. Can we just give it up for the Lord for his faithfulness and his provision? And um, I, I just want uh, to take a few moments and welcome up the one, the only, the greatest, um, and most handsomest uh, pastor that I'm married to. Uh, can we give it up for Pastor Zach? Well, there's an old saying, the only thing you need to play this game is a chip and a chair. But to sit down and win against the best, you need a whole lot more. Poker actually isn't about winning and losing. Poker is about making the right decision. You got to know when to call, when to fold, and when to push all in. Everybody say, all in. All in. That is the series that we are in right now, and I'm super excited about it. I skipped too many slides ahead, but I'm excited about this. My name is Zach, and man, we are excited to have you here. High five your neighbor. Go ahead. Um, all in. And I, I love this series because um, I love the idea. I love the idea of looking at what you have and going, let's go for it. I'm all in. I'm all in. And every one of us has done that in different seasons of our lives. And so I'm going to ask you a question, and we're going we're gonna, to um, have you talk to your neighbor, maybe talk to someone you came with, maybe somebody you didn't come with. You'll have to talk to the person in front of you or behind you. But here's the question you want to ask them. Do you enjoy playing cards? And maybe not all of you likes poker, but maybe it's like other cards. Maybe it's Uno. Maybe it's Dose. You didn't know there was a Dose, did you? There is. Maybe there's other card games, but take a minute, talk to the person next to you and ask them, do you enjoy playing cards? Ready, go. All right, 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds.
All right, so it looks like you guys had some good conversation. By a show of hands, how many people love playing cards? Any kind of cards? Okay, that's a lot of people. How many people hate cards? We got a couple of them. Nina, these are your friends. These are your friends. How many people, um, let me know if you grew up where your, your mom or your grandma or grandpa, they sat around a table and played cards, right? That's what they did. That's before they had Netflix. Like, they just hung out. They play, my mom loved rummy. You know what I mean? She still plays cards. Rummy, right? Rummy? That's what I'm talking about. There was lots of rummy. There was spades. Um, here's, a, here's one that you might, um, this is one that you know you're old if you like. Uh, canasta. Who likes canasta? Raise your hand. Me? Okay, I'm old. Crap. Um, no, you know what? I love canasta. It's like uh, phase 10. Have, have, have you guys played phase 10? Okay. It's like phase 10, but like on crack. So it's awesome. But in a good way, not like a weird crack. Anyway, that went downhill. The point is, um, we are in a series right now called All In, and whether you love cards or you hate cards, we are not promoting gambling. Okay, look at your neighbor, tell them. They're not saying start gambling, go to Vegas. That's not what we're saying. But we love the idea of going all in. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at those things, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But um, I grew up with watching my mom play cards, my grandma, everybody played cards. It, w it really was a lot of fun. And so as, as um, technology increased, I started playing poker on my iPad. Yay! Now listen, everybody go, Boo. but this was an app that they had. They still might have it. I don't know if you can see me down there in the bottom, bottom corner there. I have like Wolverine claws. Look at me. I think I'm cool, man. Right here for you guys over here. See that? I'm like Wolverine claws. And dude, I had so much fun because you were playing real people. Like it wasn't just you playing, you know, chess on like a, like a computer or solitaire, but you're playing real people and like really like you could learn them and whatever. And so I just want to point this out. Check this. Ready? Ready? Brace yourselves. Look how much money I had. Now, obviously, this is fake money. I never put a dollar into the game. Some people did. I'm not stupid. I might look stupid, but I'm not stupid. Anyways, so, but man, I really had a great time playing poker online, and I learned the stuff, and, and so then I started playing with some friends of mine. And I don't know if you know anything about poker, and I'm not going to take too long explaining it, but uh, one of my good friends, his, his name is Mike, and um, he actually loved to bet. He was a betting kind of guy. And so when I met Mike, he was working for Comcast, a uh, cable company, and they were installing cable in our brand new church building. And so he said, the cable set up, and I said, it's not working. He said, no, it's working. And I said, no, it's not working. And he said, your computer's broken. I said, no, it's not my computer. It's your internet. He's like, I'll, whatever. And so we kind of, we weren't arguing, but I said, I'll bet you lunch. Because Mike was a betting guy, and I'd never met him before. So he went and he did the test, and sure enough, guess who's, whose internet was, wasn't working? Right? It was broken. So he had to buy me lunch. I invited him to church, and we became great friends. In fact, I am his daughter's godfather now. And so we've, we've become great friends. And so Mike, good friend of mine, he, he was working for Comcast. He fell off a ladder and broke his leg three days before his birthday. I tried to call you, bro, if you're watching this and tell you I was going to tell this story. But he fell off and he broke his leg, and he was bummed out. And he wanted to go shooting and do a bunch of stuff. So instead, we used to live in Colorado. He said, why don't you guys come over here to my house, and we'll play poker. So a bunch of us guys came over. I think we all pitched in $20. It wasn't, nobody's, there wasn't drinking. We were having Cokes. It was like a normal Christian kind of a thing. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a Christian thing, okay? <laughs> it was like going to watch a movie. You spend more than that going to a movie. So we're just sitting around talking, laughing, playing cards. And I don't know if you've ever played poker, but I want to explain really quickly, even though this is high hand, this is the low hand. This is the way that you don't win anything at poker. And as you go this way, you win. So this is the highest hand in the game. It's called a royal flush, and it's all of one suit and starting from ace going to 10, okay? This hand is impossible. So we're playing. Things are going great. It's Mike's birthday. He's got a broken foot, and he's bummed out. And we play two or three, four hours, and now it's just down to him and down to me. We're playing Texas Hold'em, cutthroat, poker, right? And so we get to this hand, and everybody's getting tired, ready to, to go. And I'm thinking in my mind, it's his party. He's got a broken foot. Why don't I just let him win? So we deal the hand, and here's the problem. Here's what I got. That's a full house. That's two of, two, like one pair and three of a kind. That is a really good hand when it comes to playing poker. So I'm like, 
okay, what I'll do is I'll win and then I'll give him the money. You know what I mean? Because it's his birthday and I'm prideful. <laughs> so I go, okay, so I, I raise and he raised and I raised and he raised and I'm like, all right, that's it. And guess what I said? All in. Because I knew, I, dude, you can't beat this hand. Like this full house is a good hand. So here's what I did. And this is in front of all our church friends and Mike with the broken leg. He goes, okay, I call. I'm like, all right. And so I stood up from the table. I grabbed my cards, and, and here's what I said. Read them and weep, sucker. <laughs> I was so confident, man. I went all in. It was amazing. Ugh, right? And he goes, that's a pretty good hand. And then he lays down four of a kind. <laughs> it was terrible. But it was awesome because it was his birthday. Everybody's cheering. It was like everybody was freaking out. It was amazing. He won everything. In fact, I found the picture this, oh wait, there's, here's four of a kind. I found the picture, here is Mike, all happy with his money. That's a can of Coke, you know what I mean? We just, and a broken leg. So give Mike a big hand, he's not watching, but. But we all have those all in moments, man. It's those moments where I'm like, okay, I think, I, man, I got this, I got this. And either we got it or we don't got it. Well, in life, we have all in kind of moments too. And over the um, next couple of weeks, we're gonna be talking about that. Pastor Danessa did such a great job talking about how we go all in with the Holy Spirit last week. And I just want to say this, um, um, for you and I, as we're processing this kind of stuff, we can go all in, and sometimes it might feel like we're like, I don't, I don't know what happened. Like, I went all in on whatever, maybe one of these things, and I don't feel like I want. And sometimes these things take a little time. Last week, Pastor Danessa talked about this guy named Peter. And he was the Apostle Peter, but he was also, um, in her words, he was just, he was a mess, man. What did you say? You said something like knucklehead. That's what, I loved it. He was a knucklehead because he was going all in every time. God, if it's you, let me get out of the boat. Just dumb stuff sometimes. He, but he was always going all in. And so Peter did this pretty well. He was a fisherman. He did, did all these great things. Jesus even appeared to him but there was something that changed between when Jesus appeared to him, some, something happened. Because Peter didn't see Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, and then all of a sudden go do something amazing. He actually saw Jesus, and then nothing happened for a while. But something did happen eventually on the day of Pentecost, and this was it. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that became the difference between Peter knucklehead and Peter carved in stone apostle. Does that make sense? The feeling, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And some of you prayed for this last week, and I, I want to encourage you. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and this isn't even the point of the whole message. But uh, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth, and he says, let love be your highest goal. The number one thing is love. We can do a ton of great stuff, but we don't love people. It's all a sham, is basically what he's saying. But he says, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives. Um, another version puts it like this, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe you prayed last week and you don't feel like anything happened, you're like nothing special, you didn't preach and 3,000 people got saved, whatever, but it's okay. This stuff kind of takes time and the Lord pours out these gifts in His timing, so I don't want you to be discouraged at all. Let's keep desiring those gifts. Amen? Amen. Well, we are in the book of Acts, and like Danessa said, we're going through, um, we're reading one chapter a day, so we're in chapter 8 right now, and it's getting intense, man. There's some crazy stuff that happened in the book of Acts, and so last week she talked about Peter. This week we're going to focus on the Jews and what happened, excuse me, in Jerusalem. And so, just to catch some of you up to speed, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2, verse, verse 42. And we're going to read from there, but I want to get you guys up to speed. So Jesus raises from the dead. He talks to a few people, and he says, go to Jerusalem and wait until you're filled with the Spirit. So the Spirit comes. Everything is amazing. Um, people hear this great noise. Everybody comes out. Peter stands up in boldness this time, does not put his foot in his mouth. He preaches this amazing message, and 3,000 people get saved in one moment. Incredible, okay? So now there's this amazing outpouring. And so here's where we pick up in the scripture. So this is Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Now, this isn't in, this red part isn't in the Bible. It's the heading that they put in my Bible, okay? And yours might have something like this. But let's read this red part together. The believers form a community. I think you can do better this side than that side did. Let's try it again. The believers form a community. 
They did great. Okay. So this is sort of the heading, and I want to stop there really quickly be, because for you and I, we've got to understand that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that the natural outpouring of that is community. That's just what happens. If I were to fill myself with Mountain Dew, the natural outpouring would be, a, right? Because I, I would have too much caffeine. That's just what happens. The Holy Spirit is community. He lives in community. He's part of the Trinity. When you are filled, community is the outpouring. It's the outflow. So here's what, here's what it says. All the believers devoted themselves, and we're going to read through all of this in case you didn't bring your, your Bible. We're going to read through it all. So it's going to be a lot of scripture, but we'll get to it in just, um, just a minute. All the believers devoted th themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. And finally, Acts 2.47, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Stop there. Cheryl, goodwill is in the Bible. You know what I mean? They were enjoying Goodwill, right? I get a lot of my clothes from Goodwill. Anyways, praise the Lord. <clears throat> all the while praising God, enjoying the goodwill of all the people, and each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Okay, this is amazing. This is the natural outpouring. They didn't plan this. They didn't try to structureize this. They, didn't do, they just were filled with the Spirit. A boatload of people got saved, and here's what happened. Okay? And so I want you to understand the process. This is a natural outpouring. And so over the next few moments, we're going to kind of dissect some of this. And I want to look at it from the perspective of three different actions. Now, we're not going to talk about all three. But in this passage, the, um, there's three different people doing things. or three, three different actions from different people. Number one, the believers. Everybody say the believers. Number two, the apostles. Everybody say the apostles. And number three, the Lord. You guys are smart, man. High five somebody. That was awesome. Okay? It's amazing. And I want you guys to see this. As we pick this apart, it's kind of all jumbled in. It's kind of like Portuguese bean soup. Mm, doesn't that sound great on a day like today? Right? Who makes the best Portuguese bean soup? I like zippies. Anyone else? No? Okay. Anyways, it's kind of like Portuguese bean soup. It's not just like three different courses, it's all kind of in there. So as we read, we're going to see Portuguese sausage and, you know, noodles and cabbage and everything. It's all kind of intermixed. So we're going to have to pick it out a little bit. But I want to show you, this is the entire scripture passage that we read. This is the whole thing from start to finish. And what I did is I, is I took out the part that the apostles did because none of us are Jesus' 12 apostles. And I took out the part that the Lord did because none of us are the Lord. I just left in the part that the believers did. Everybody say, the believers. So here's what it looks like. Portuguese sausage, right? They devoted themselves to teaching, fellowship, sharing in meals, to prayer. The believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold. They shared money with those in need. They worshiped together. They met in homes. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity. They praised God, and they enjoyed goodwill. This is kind of a big list, and it's sort of all over the place, just like Portuguese sausage. But this morning, we're going to look at three things that the believers did, they devoted themselves to. And as we do that, we're going to talk about this idea of diving into community, of being all in when it comes to community. Now, if you did not get one of these chips, we're going to pass them out. So raise your hand, keep it up. We're going to give you a chip so that you can kind of fiddle with it and have it in your hand and drop it, and it'll make lots of noise. Um, but um, I want you to kind of be fiddling with this thing. I want you to kind of, we're going to use this here in just a bit later. But all the believers were devoted. Number one, if you're a note taker, the believers were devoted to growing. Everyone say growing. They were devoted to growing, all the believers. They, for most of these people, this is the first time they had heard about Jesus at all. And all of a sudden, 
they experience him, they're filled with the spirit, they're baptized, and they're like, I, I need more. Like, I got to have more of this. And so they devoted themselves to growing back to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to a couple of things, to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship and, and sharing in meals. I love that the Bible says that. I know that the Hebrews aren't Mexicans, but Mexicans love to eat. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it says. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to hanging out, to eating tacos, and prayer. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just love this idea that God puts that in there. He's like, it's, it, it's important to eat together. God blessed us with food, and he loves us to share that with each other. I want you to look at this real, um, really quickly, because this is something that's important. All the believers devoted themselves to whose teaching? The apostles' teaching. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and, and I need you to track with me for just a moment. Back then... The disciples did not have the New Testament. Does that make sense? It was being written. They were living the New Testament. So they didn't have anything that we have now when it comes to the New Testament. All they had was the Old Testament. And the Old Testament, what they discovered was full of references about Jesus. And so the apostles were just constantly mind blown because they're reading through the Old Testament going, wait, that's him in the Old Testament, right? They're flipping out, freaking out. If the believers back then wanted to be taught from anyone. Who were they going to go to? There's the first one. The apostles. Okay? There was no other church that they could go to down the street. Does that make sense? There was no such thing as podcasts back then. There was no blogs by so-and-so. There was none of that. If they wanted to grow and be taught in the scripture, they had to go straight to, to the apostles. And I... I want to um, be careful about this because a lot of people, myself included, we, like, I watch podcasts. I, there's really good stuff happening in all of those things. But ultimately, the way that God designed the believers to be fed was from the people that were caring for them. Does that make sense? He designed us to be in one body, be together, and to be growing, devoted to growing together what God is speaking to this community. And back then, there was only one. It was a big one. They had 3,000 people right away, but it was, all, it was only one. Sometimes what happens is, is we'll listen to podcasts, or we'll do stuff from other things. We'll read books, and those are all great things, but ultimately, that might not be what God is saying to this group of people. And so we just got to be careful. I'm not saying supplementing is bad, but ultimately, if God's called you to a church, he's going to speak the most through those people. Does that make sense? And it's important for us to be devoted to growing in that way. It's important for us to, being f to, to be devoted to doing life, man, to, to, uh, to be um, um, growing together. You know, there's a, there's a quote that I, I, I don't know if I made up, but because I couldn't find who made it up, I'm going to take credit for it. So, <clears throat> boom. <laughs> yeah. If we're not intentional about growing, if we're not intentional about, um, about every season that we go through, sometimes we can just go through seasons. And they're like, oh, man, that stunk. Woo. But we don't learn the lesson that God has for us. Sometimes we seek other, um, other things outside, and we'll get other stuff, and we'll be like, okay, I think I learned. But what is God saying to me here in this moment, in this place, from the people that are called to pour into you and I? Sometimes, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this. When I was a kid, I used to, like, God, speak to me. And so I'd, like, flip the Bible, right? And I'm, like, trying to find, like, what God, like, okay, God, nope, that wasn't it. Right? Have you ever done that? God, speak to me. I know you have. Come on. You've done that. Now it's, like, a Bible app version. You're, like, right? Okay. Job. Nope, not reading Job. All right, let's keep flipping. Right? But sometimes we do that even with, with like, podcasts or, like, YouTube videos. Like, man, what am I struggling with? Okay, God, speak to me about this thing. But truth of the matter was, was that I knew what the Lord was saying because my dad had already told me, right? But I didn't want to hear that, man. Unless we're intentional, unless we're devoted to growing, we're just going to go through stuff. We're just going to go through it. And then we don't ever learn that, that, that lesson. My goal for you is that you would grow we, we just had our, um, our class, uh, membership class, and it's really just about next steps. And so we kind of set up some of these steps, and I'm not going to go into all this, but we're working real hard to set up steps for you and I so that we know what's next in our relationship 
with God. And so if that's something that, that you weren't able to come to, uh, to that class, I would highly encourage you. Uh, we're going to have one here in, um, in a month or two. But we, it's important for us to be devoted to growing and knowing what God has next for us. The second thing that they were devoted to is this. All the believers were devoted to gathering. Everybody say gathering. And this one is one of the most important ones because of this idea. We're going to go back to the text, Acts chapter 2, uh, 44 and 45. All the believers met together in how many places? One place. All the believers met together in one place. That's a lot of people. 3,000 people could not fit in this room. But that's a lot of people. And they, but they met together. And I think the Bible is specific about this. In verse 46, it says they worship together where? At the temple. Read those next two, two words after temple. Ready? Go. Each day. Those guys had church every day. Every day. What? You know people that don't come but once a month, right? Right? Dude, each day they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy. These guys were devoted to gathering because they recognized that something special happens when we're together. We experienced that this morning, right? That was good, man. There was good stuff happening. I was like, oh, wow. Like, when we get together, God looks at it and he goes, I love that. In fact, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people that were two or more. Guess what? He made that the, prere the prerequisite of him being there. Like, two or more. I'm there. Like, I promise I'll be there regardless. Like, God wants us to gather. He loves that we gather. There's, a, there's an ancient um, uh, text. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 4, and it's called the Shema. And the Shema is this prayer that the Hebrews pray every day. In fact, they, they pray it three times a day, I think. But it starts with this phrase. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. It's a good reminder that God, even though he's three, he's one. And I think that's what the Bible is saying. The believers met together in one place. We reflect God. That's number two. We reflect God. We imitate him when we gather because that's who he is. And guess what? The enemy knows that. I found a picture of, of a baby elephant and a lion. And, and I heard you go, aww, right? We know what's going to happen. There were other pictures that I didn't show. This is a kid's show, right? This was, but what happens, if you look at the size, just the size, right here, there is no way just with the size that the elephant should lose. But what lions do is the same thing that the enemy does. They isolate them and get them on their own. And then they get ganged up on by two or three lionesses because they're the hunters. Just like women are the shoppers. Just kidding, I don't know. I shop at Goodwill. Okay. <clears throat> They isolate them, they get them on the side, they get them on, you know, on the edge, away from the herd, and then they're vulnerable. The enemy knows. But God says, no, 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 I need you to devote yourself to gathering. Devote yourself to being together, even when you don't want to, introverts. Because there's something that happens when we're together. I married an introvert. I, I, I'm with you. I love you. Okay. But we've got to devote ourselves to being together, to encouraging one another, to, to being in a place where we can, we can be excited about meals and like, hey, come over. I'm watching the Broncos beat the Raiders tomorrow afternoon at 420, and you're all invited. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, babe. But you're invited. Come on over. Let's hang out. You know what I mean? Let's be devoted to gathering together. And, and the last thing as we as we look at this, is the believers were devoted to one more thing. And this one is not the hardest one, but man, this one hits you right in the pocketbook. They were devoted to generosity. Everybody say generosity. I'm going to read these scriptures, and I just want you to brace yourself. Like, we read through them once, but you kind of glazed over. I'm going to read them one more time. And the red part of the scripture, I want you to kind of read with me. You don't have to read it out loud, but just let it sink in what's What's actually being said? We're going to look back. This is verse 44. And all the believers met together in how many places? One. Okay, one place, just like God is one. In one place and shared everything they had. 
they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Next verse. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Next verse. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. These guys sold their stuff and gave away the money. Like, imagine that. I'm not a homeowner. I would love to be a homeowner. But imagine we go to church, someone's like, man, I can't pay my bills. You're like, oh, it's cool, I got a house. Hey, put the house on the market. Just... That's what they're saying. They sold property. Like, they sold stuff. Now, let me put this caveat in there. The believers that the Bible's talking about in the book of Acts believed with all their heart Jesus was coming back in their lifetime. Okay? They believed with all their heart. They just knew it. They couldn't even fathom that he would wait a generation. So they're like, what does it matter? I'm all in. Right? I'm good. It doesn't matter anyway. So they sold it. I don't have to give nothing to my kids. Boom, I'm cashing out. Right? Like, that's, that's how they felt. Because they were all in when it comes to to the Holy Spirit, they were all in with community. They just went all in with their generosity. They just went for it. This is extravagant. Like, this is honestly, it's, 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 too, it's too much. In fact, later on in the New Testament, we find out that the, that the believers in other churches, that's number three, the believers in the other churches had to take up offerings because these people were like destitute. They just sold everything, probably even too much. You know what I mean? Now, I don't believe that's necessarily the command that God is giving us right now, but it's this idea of generosity. It's this idea of caring for others' needs. It's this idea of someone else being more important than me. Does that make sense? And that's, for, for them, that's what they were all in on. I found this quote by a guy named Winston Winston Churchill, great man, military leader, amazing mind. But here's what he said. He said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Every one of us has a job, probably. Or we're living in our mom's house, right? I don't know. And every one of us makes a living. That's part of this. That's just how life is. That's, you, it's, if you want to eat, you got to work. Right? And that's, that's just part of life. And, but sometimes we get caught up in that. Sometimes we get stuck in that. Sometimes that becomes the most important thing. Sometimes we're like, well, man, I don't want to go to the small group because i got to work in the morning. Man, I, I'm really stressed out at work. And we avoid the very thing that God is trying to pull us into to help us grow. We're supposed to be devoted to gathering, but we put more importance over the living that we're making, the things that we're getting. And God's like, no, no, no. I want you to be devoted to generosity. I want you to, to be devoted to being people that will prioritize others. Because when we do that, we imitate Christ. When we do that, we replicate who he is and what he did for us. I want you to know that you and I have an opportunity this morning with that chip. We have an opportunity this morning to say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on community. And that's going to look differently. For some, for some of you, you're, you're, you're already connected with groups, and it's great, and, and you're growing. Things are happening. Awesome. Cool. There's going to be another challenge at the end. For some of you, maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're all in on, on a couple of them, but when it comes to generosity, that's the area that you struggle. Like, oh, it's really hard. I'm going to be honest, that's me. I'm judgmental, for real. Like, when I see someone begging, I'm like, dude, I'm working, right? And I don't know if you think that. If you're watching online, my bad. But, like, I'm like, dude, like, you look like you could work to me. And I find myself being there in that place. True confessions, right? And that's when I have to recognize, you know what? That's not the kind of heart that God wants me to have. That's not the kind of devotion to generosity that God wants me to display to the hurting around me. And the truth of the matter is, is that he's probably super bummed out about standing there. I, I would be, right? Oh, I'm like, oh man, I got nothing. Sorry, bro, right? 
But the things that they need, we put some of those things right inside here. And there's a little note that says, just because you matter. And for you and I, I want you to grow when it comes to your devotion to generosity. Your devotion to putting others first. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to put some money in here. We didn't put any money in. Number one, I don't have any. But number two, that's your job. And you can pray and say, God, how much do you want me to put in here? It could be a dollar, it could be five, it could be 20. You would blow somebody away if you, if you drop 20 in, in here. And then we're going to pray and say, God, would you, would you show me who to give this to? Would you help me to grow in my devotion to generosity? Would you help me to look at others as more important than myself? Would you help me, God, to be all in when it comes to community? And so what I want you, um, you to do, I'm going to pray in just, just a moment, but if you're willing, I want you to take this chip back to that table. And I want you to tell God as you put your chip on the table, God, I'm all in. I'm all in on community. Maybe that means signing up for a group. Maybe you're already super generous, but you struggle with the groups area. Maybe for you, you're, you're in groups and you, you're generous, but man, it's the growth area. I'm having a hard time. Whatever it is this morning, would you do me a favor? Would you go in just a moment after I pray, go to that back table and say, God, I'm all in and leave your chip on the table. You can grab a bag, you can grab a sticker, put it on your car if you want to, that way when you drive away they go, oh, elevate, I don't know. But ultimately it's this, it's, it's you and I saying, God, I'm done doing this on my own. God, I'm all in. I wanna try it your way now. I wanna do it your way now. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, right now in this place, I thank you for who you are, God, and what you've done in us and through us. God, I thank you that you went all in for us. You gave us the most important thing to you, which was your son. And then, God, you shared your Holy Spirit with me. Oh, my gosh, you, you've been all in every time. And, God, then you went all in. You gave us a community of faith to be with. And I'm so grateful for every person that's in this room. And even those that aren't here, Father, right now I pray your blessing on this moment, God, and as, ye, as we sit here, God, I pray that you would help us to recognize the opportunity that you gave us, the moment that we can be all in with you when it comes to community. We can be devoted to growing, we can be devoted to gathering, and we can be devoted to generosity. And I believe, God, that if we'll be a community that does that, that we can not only change this church, we can change this neighborhood, God, because you are the one that's motivating it all. So God, we love you, we thank you, God, we desperately need you, and I pray that you would help us go all in. If I could take one more quick second, fam, if there's anyone in this room that with, all, with your eyes closed and, um, and your heads bowed and you would say, Pastor Zach, I've been all in before, but man, I don't know where my relationship with God stands. I, if I were honest with myself, I don't know if I could say that I'm all in when it comes to even having Christ as my Lord and Savior. No one's looking around, but if that's you in this place and you would say, I want to go all in this morning when it comes to my faith. I want to receive Jesus in my heart. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but if that's you, raise your, ra raise your hand. Anyone else? I'm going to pray a real quick prayer, and I'd like for everyone to repeat after me because I don't want to single anyone out. Would you repeat after me, dear Jesus? Thank you for going all in for me. Thank you for dying. And thank you for raising from the dead so that I could be saved. Today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. God, I'm all in with you. Direct my life. Be the Lord of my life. I surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, right now, I pray for your blessing on every person here. God, I pray that you would go with them. God, that you would give us the courage to be all in this morning. You would give us the courage to be all in this week as we devote ourselves to, God, to growth, to gathering, and to generosity. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. This morning, guys, if you are all in, take your chips back to the table and say that prayer as you said it on the table. God, I'm all in. You can pick up a bag, and don't forget to put some cash inside.